Manchester United have unlocked the key to signing Manuel Ugarte with clever transfer ploy. Man United are looking to sign a midfielder before the transfer deadline and talks are progressing for Manuel Ugarte. When Manchester United splashed the cash on Joshua Xerxy and Lenny Yoro earlier in the transfer window, it became clear they might have to be creative to sign a midfielder. United have worked with a limited budget and, like all Premier League clubs, have been conscious of PSR rules, which meant spending a multi-million fee on a midfielder without offloading Casemiro, there was a lack of interest in the Brazilian, wasn't going to be financially possible. That's without mentioning United also signed Matais de Ligt and Nusser Mazraoui for an initial combined fee of 60 million euros, 51 million pounds, from Bayern Munich to strengthen the defense. With Xerxy, Euro, De Ligt and Mazraoui through the door, the club's attention has turned to signing a midfielder and talks are progressing with Paris Saint-Germain for Ugart. A move for Ugrart seemed to lose momentum last month due to PSG's valuation of the player, but a compromise to negotiate a loan deal for the 23-year-old is currently being discussed. United's preference is to buy Ugarte from PSG, but they have been unwilling to meet the £51.5 asking price, and a loan deal could be structured with the option to make it permanent. United were forced to be creative to sign Amrabat last summer stumping up a hefty $10 million loan fee and including an option to make the deal permanent for 25 meters. And it always felt likely that a breakthrough for Ugarte would require a deal to be similarly structured. The need for some fresh legs in the center of the pitch has been obvious since November, despite there being signs in the last few weeks that there may be some life still in Casemiro. Although Burnley midfielder Sander Burge was considered by United, he's now on his way to Craven Cottage, and that is expected to end their interest in Scott McTominay, who could have unlocked a permanent transfer for Ugarte if he was sold for 30 minalers to the London club. Keeping McTominay, who became a match winner from the bench last season, and negotiating a workaround to sign Ugarte is the ideal outcome, and United are hopeful of pulling it off. Well-placed sources have acknowledged there would be a benefit to United's profitability and sustainability calculations if a fixed fee for Ugarte is deferred until next summer and the Uruguay International was left out of PSG's squad last weekend as talks picked up momentum again. In terms of what Ugarte would bring to United, he's a highly mobile defensive midfielder and will be able to intercept and recover balls, which is what Eric Ten Hag needs. The midfield was the biggest problem last term, which was partly due to personnel and partly tactical, and going into the new season without making a new signing was unthinkable. Casemiro has looked sharp in attacking areas in the community shield and on the opening day of the season against Fulham, however he still looked off the pace defensively. Ugarte should be able to pick up his slack and could be the perfect foil for Kobe Menu, with Bruno Fernandes starting in front of that pair in central attacking midfield. There has been a growing South American influence in the United dressing room since Ten Hag's appointment from Ajax in the spring of 2022, and Ugarte has the aggression, quality, and mentality that is typically associated with players from that corner of the world. He should improve United and is a better option than re-signing Amrabat, which has been discussed and not ruled out throughout the summer in the old Trafford boardroom. Amrabat made an impact at the end of last season, and fans will be hoping Ugarte can make an impression sooner, providing a deal can be agreed with PSG before August 30. Manchester United had been searching for that missing piece in their midfield, and it seemed they might have found it in the form of Manuel Ugarte. The dynamic midfielder had caught the eye of many top clubs across Europe with his performances, but it was United who appeared to have unlocked the key to securing his signature, thanks to a clever transfer ploy that had taken many by surprise. As the summer transfer window wore on, it became clear that United were in the market for a player who could bring both energy and composure to the heart of their midfield. Eric Ten Hag had been meticulously analyzing his squad, identifying areas where they needed reinforcement. Ugarte, with his combination of tenacity, vision, and tactical awareness, 
fit the profile perfectly. The challenge, however, was that Ugarte was in high demand. Clubs from Spain, Italy, and even within the Premier League were circling, each hoping to lure the Uruguayan to their ranks. United knew that if they were going to win this race, they needed more than just a hefty transfer fee. Other news. I'll show you these notes one day, how Antony is planning a comeback at Manchester United. Antony discusses his tumultuous 2023-24 season, issues off the pitch, his relationship with Eric Ten Hag, and how uneasy he was at full back. Three goals and two assists in a season for a £100 million Manchester United forward. Antony is aware of the statistics. He has started to jot down objectives on paper, goal participations, assists, where he can improve, how many shots he should register, dribble, and pass completions. If Antony does not have the hard copy at hand, he will ask his wife, Rosaline Silva, to sift through the files and send him pictures. He looks at them every day. I definitely need more goal participations and to score more goals, he says in the lobby of United's Beverly Hills Hotel. It's something I demand from myself. Rest assured, you'll hear the name Antony in relation to goals and assists. The only time Antony's name was heard last season was at Newport County, the scene of one of his goals. Only the natives provided the orchestra. The lyrics are unrepeatable. There are ongoing investigations in England and Brazil into allegations of domestic abuse against Antony, which he denies. The 24-year-old took a leave of absence for four weeks last year and voluntarily attended an interview at a police station in September. Antony returned for United's sixth defeat in ten games against Galatasaray in October. There would be more spirals in a fraught season, and Antony was among those at the club overwhelmed by the maelstrom. Eric Ten Hag has managed Antony in all four of his seasons in Europe at United and Ajax, and admitted the off-the-pitch matters had affected the Brazilian on the pitch. I'm someone who demands a lot of myself, Antony stresses. I was obviously not satisfied with my season, but a lot happened over the year in my personal life. Like it or not, everything I went through had an effect on the pitch. As I've said before, that's behind me now, and now it's a new season. I've got a strong mentality, and I'm focused on what I want. I know that this season will be totally different. Everything I went through was very difficult for me and all my family. I've learned from it all. I've grown and matured. I believe I learned a lot from the adversity. I learned from everything I go through and learned that everything is possible when you persist in achieving what you want. That's why I said I put the past behind me, what I went through last season. There were good moments as well, winning a trophy in a United shirt is really important. I matured and grew from it all and this will make me stronger going into this new season. As I said, new season, new mindset, I'm a lot more focused and prepared to achieve great things. I feel a lot less burdened and more prepared as well. I'm a lot more focused and as you said, a lot freer to do what I genuinely know how to do. I'm 100% prepared and focused to help United. Infernino, the name of the favela, working class neighborhoods outside of major Brazilian cities Antony grew up in, is tattooed across his neck. The 24-year-old lived in Infernino for 10 years with his mother, father, brother and sister until his parents separated in 2010. Antony continued to live in Infernino until 2019. The family often ran out of food, their home would flood whenever it rained, and Antony did not have a bedroom, so he slept on the sofa. Rosaline, who gave birth to the couple's daughter Levine in June, grew up in the same favela. When people talk about me or criticize me, I always find solace in where I came from, Antony says. I'll never let anyone else write my story or let people put me down as I genuinely know what it's like to be at the bottom. I'm really grateful to the favela, it's somewhere I suffered a lot, but always with a smile on my face. It is also where I saw my best friend go down another path. For me to represent the favela today is so rewarding, it's somewhere I'll take with me for the rest of my life. I always play with favela written on my boots as it's always with me. 
I have a lot of relatives that still live there. The majority of my family still live there. My parents and brother and sister don't live there anymore. Whenever I'm on holiday, I always look to pay a visit, even if it's for a short amount of time. It renews my energy, reminds me where I come from and everything I went through to get here. As I said before, I always get emotional talking about the favela because it's somewhere I learned so much through adversity. We had nothing, just our faith in God and determination. I remember when I was little, my mom and dad would work a lot and only come home at night. I said to my mom that there will come a time when she can stop working and I'll be the one doing the running and providing. Today I can live this dream. I can see my mom provided for well and I'm doing the running now. Otherwise, 